everyone, have another video for you guys. Uh, not a huge update or anything, but I do have a server here to to uh, to make a video on, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna jump right to it. I got this thing a few days ago uh, because my family knows someone who works in IT. And actually about a year and a half ago, a little more than actually, he gave me this Dell PowerEdge 2600. I think I made a video of, on this on in August of 2013 or something. Um, this is a pretty nice server, he just let me have it. Um, and for the past six months or so, he's been saying that he has more for me. It's just I've been at college in another state, so uh, I haven't really had the opportunity to meet with him until a few days ago when I did, and he gave me this. So I drove to his house, like 20 minutes away. Uh, he helped me load this thing up in the car, and uh, it's all mine. So um, I guess I'll go ahead and go into, into the, the details of what it actually has. Opening it up, well, when I originally got it, I was kind of expecting it to be like a dual single core Xeon kind of kind of deal with like, you know, maybe DDR memory and like SCSI uh, SCSI RAID controller and stuff, but um, looking at it, firstly I noticed how new it looks it's pretty much dustless and I started it up and actually found that it has two 2.5 GHz quad-core Xeon CPUs and uh, 12 gigs of memory I'll show you that right now if I can get this off with one hand Kind of tricky. Hold on. Oh, come on. That goes out. Okay. So there's the memory. The CPU is under there. I haven't pulled heat sinks off, of course, since I have no reason to. It's got 12 1 gigabyte sticks of DDR2 667 megahertz memory. Um, and it's actually weird because it's, it's quad channel, and there's like three different sets of. Um, Three different sets of memory, I guess you could say. So there's like channel one, channel two, and channel three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Each with four slots, so that's kind of interesting. Also knows it has a SATA uh, RAID controller. He told me that it takes SCSI drives, but it is in fact connected to a board that takes SATA, so it does not take SCSI. Uh, it's pretty cool. It didn't have any hard drives in it. Explaining why I did that in a sec. And actually, trying to get it, trying to get it to work, I had a little bit of issues because um, it was throwing me a whole bunch of memory issues. It, was, it wasn't recognizing a bunch of the memory that was plugged in, but through enough tweaking and pulling the six out, blowing the slots out, putting them back in, I got all I got all the memory to work, which is nice. Um, so it didn't have a hard drive. I originally took a 320 gig hard drive out of a desktop computer I have upstairs at home here. That. Um, was set up to, to work with my family's 3D printer. Uh, removed Windows from it and put Windows Server on it after plugging it to here. It took a little bit of work because there's these two general, uh, I don't know what to call them, channels sort of, are plugged into the controller here. It's like channel 0 and 1 or A and B, whatever you want to call them. Um, one here and one here. And there's four hard drives each for a total of eight hard drive slots. And uh, I was, whenever I plugged a hard drive into slot A, this wouldn't work, wouldn't detect it at all. If I plugged into slot B, it worked fine. So I was kind of confused by that. But yeah, I took that 320 gig and I put Windows Server on and realized that I had this Linux backup server I made a while ago here. It's old Dell Dimension 3100 with the Pentium 4. I bought a 4 terabyte hard drive for it and put it in this thing and I kind of stopped using it. So I decided, why not take the 4 terabyte drive out of this thing, retire this thing, and just use a 4 terabyte in this. So I did, um, leaving me with a 320 gig that put back in the machine upstairs and reload Windows on, took tons of time. Stupid inefficiency, but... So yeah, it's running a 4 terabyte SATA hard drive right now on uh, this slot right here. I actually had to take uh, the hard drive bay slot out of this PowerEdge 2600. Thankfully, thankfully, I had an extra one because all these little things right here, these are just... these are just uh, cosmetic. They don't actually have a rail behind them, so yeah. It's also got a SATA DVD drive, which is pretty nice. Um, so I guess that's enough on specs. Like again, it has two 2.5 GHz quad-core Xeons. I think those are the X5300 series. Like uh, they've even got 1300 MHz FSB, which is pretty nice. Uh, 12 gigs of dual or I think quad channel DDR2, 667 MHz fully buffered server memory, and a four terabyte SATA hard drive. Problem. That, with that, though, I forgot to mention that um, this machine it limits the size of the connected physical drive to a maximum of two terabytes. So it's a four terabyte drive. 
only be recognized as two terabytes. That's kind of lame, but um, if I ever actually need more than two terabytes, what I'll do is I'll just I'll take it out of this thing. Um, and thanks to the Windows Server, which I have loaded on this, is pretty versatile with their drivers. So I could probably just pull this four terabyte drive out of this machine, pop it into another server, and just use it from then on without having to worry about compatible drivers or anything if I ever need more than the two terabyte maximum. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this case back on, plug in my keyboard and mouse, and boot it up for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Makes a bit of noise. And the fan RPMs drop down. When I first started up, I didn't have the case on it, and it runs really loud. The fans are at 100% without the uh, case on it, so yeah. Um, so it boots up pretty quick. My, my other server, like my 2600, takes at least a couple minutes to go through the splash menu here, but this one's actually pretty fast. So yeah, um, thankfully, I didn't have an operating system to put on this, but thankfully, my school has a program called DreamSpark where I get a whole bunch of uh, software for free, including like Windows Server 2008 R2, which I'm running on my main server at college. And then, um, and then I got a free copy of Windows Server 2012 R2 for this machine. So, popped it on the four terabyte drive, and it runs runs pretty smoothly. And I'll show you guys what this what I'm doing with this thing in particular, besides just letting it run 24/7 for no reason. So what I'm actually doing with this is I'm running a Minecraft server and a um, Gmod server it's for the heck of it. Also trying to test out running a Rust server, but that really doesn't work so well for some reason. It doesn't seem to like older hardware. It doesn't run well at all on these things. But it, the Rust server runs fine on my uh, on my um, like my laptop. It runs like crap on you know dual Xeons from seven years ago. But anyway, um, yeah, these game servers are one thing I'm trying to test. I have crappy DSL here, so the connection's not that great. I'm doing these servers kind of just as a test to see if the connection's any good. I might post the IP addresses to these servers on my Steam, uh, Steam community and website for anyone who wants to join. But yeah, um, connection's probably not going to be the best until it gets upgraded, which I might convince my parents to do. Uh, but also, I think I may have mentioned that, well, obviously I did mention that this is my Linux backup server, but since I'm retiring this, I just put CrashPlan, which is a backup program, on the server, so uh, machines on my local area network here are going to back up to this computer now instead of that one. So, um, other than the backup server, this thing isn't really doing much of anything important. I mean, it's kind of just sitting here. I'll, I'm going to remote control it from college. To, ins to install whatever I want on it and just do whatever I want with it in the future. It's really just kind of, you know, I kind of went through the trouble of setting up just for the heck of having another server to work with if I need it, which I might not. Um, temperatures are pretty good. CP1 idles around average of 30 or 32 degrees. Actually, sorry, it's CPU2. CP1 is at about 40 degrees. Memory is going at 33, 35. So it runs pretty cool at least in comparison to my Precision 690. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all I really have to mention. All in all, pretty good machine for free. I'm happy with it, and um, hopefully I'll be doing stuff with it in the future as soon as I get a good connection to anything off of it at least, to expand my arsenal of gaming servers for those of you who are interested in my gaming community. So yeah, that sums it up. Uh, as always, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.